It's just so much BS. It's like wild to me. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to greener, cleaner beauty, skincare, and more. So today, these are the things that I wish that I knew when I first started out on this journey. I'm sharing them with you because I'm hoping that they're gonna help you if you're just getting started out or if you just need a reminder or a refresher or whatever. So if you wanna hear about that, then stick around and let's get into it. Dear Britt starting a YouTube channel, I won't talk about the YouTube part of this different video. Dear Brit getting started on her clean and green beauty journey. The first thing I want to tell you is it's not black and white. It is all about progress over perfection here. So this one was very difficult for me. Personally, I'm a very black and white individual. I have a ten tendency to not have patience for the gray area. Keyword, patience. I really wish I had known back in the day that there was no absolutely standard universal definition of what clean means. It is so personal. Now, there are ingredients there that you don't want in a product, okay? It's the dirty dozen. Everybody has those. Credo has them. EWG has them. I have it all listed in my starter guide. Click the link below to check it so out. You have your red flag ingredients, fine. You don't want those in there. They're not helpful. They're not serving you at a biological level and they're gonna mess with your skin. And I also, in the beginning, said I'm gonna get to 100% clean. <laughs> Which, cool, I like a goal, I like a big goal, I like to shoot for something. That is not the path that I'm on now. I've learned that there's a give and take here. You know, you start with the products that you use in the biggest surface area. If they're not perfectly clean, PS, nothing is. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be 100%. I will get comments that'll say, oh, well, I was using this and I also use this for mascara and I know it's bad. No, this isn't about being ashamed of still using. You're just trying, just on a journey. It really is a journey. There is trial and error. Start with the basics, less is more, and just know that it doesn't have to be perfect. Also, samples are your best friend. Second thing I would tell myself, especially with all of these videos that I do, in the beginning, I would try and make excuses for products that wouldn't work. For my skin type, I would go, oh, well, it's working for so-and-so, or everybody loves this foundation. I can make it work, I can do this. I just, oh, maybe it's the application, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. I don't have to make excuses for things that don't work for my skin type, and you don't have to either. We invest money into something, of course we're gonna try and find a way to use it. We'll get to that in one quick second. Samples are key here, try a sample. If it doesn't work, and you keep like trying and trying and trying, it just doesn't work. Flip side of that, if it's working for everybody and everyone's like, oh my God, I love this. It doesn't work for me. As you guys know, I've become very comfortable saying it doesn't work for me. It's okay. On to the next one. Application does matter. I've mentioned this in a lot of videos. I can be a little, little, little lazy with my application techniques. And I'm like, whatever, I'll just put it on with this brush. You know, I don't know if it's like an age thing. I'm talking about skin, not maturity. It's probably just watching all the YouTube videos, to be honest with you. Application can really, really be a game changer. Do I subscribe to this, you know, multiple step brush, da 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 No, not a makeup artist, never claim to be respect them so much and I am inspired by them. I do, however, take little pieces and nuggets from videos that I've watched and leverage those for things that are kind of bugging me or I just learn along the way. When I would so. do first impression videos. I would take it at first impression and be like, Ugh, and that would really kind of put a dark cloud over a product. Nowadays, I test them for much longer and I look at the different ways to apply them. One of the key examples of that is concealers. Concealers can be really tricky when you hit, I think, probably past 30. I think before that, you're like, cool, whatever, and they like slather it on. Your skin starts to change, things start to change. Concealer can be tricky. Foundation can obviously be tricky. Base complexion products, that's where I look. And then, you know, like for fun, how do I do that eyeshadow? How do you do a can I? If you feel like a product's failing you, look at some application techniques before you totally write it off. You don't have to know every tip and trick in the book. That'd be one more piece of advice I give to myself. Like, just give it a second. Again, feel like these are falling under patience. 
Hmm. The next thing I will say is, hey Brit, when you first started out, every product is a multitasker. I don't care what they tell you, I don't care how it's marketed, everything can be a multitasker. I totally encourage you to play. Might as well have fun with it while you're getting ready. A lot of people naturally do. It can also save you a couple of bucks. Oh, uh, by the way, sometimes that works for skincare too. I'll get to that in a minute. The next thing I would tell myself is, at the very beginning of this, I was very excited, very passionate, and I thought, I have to try it all. I'm gonna do it all. Oh my God, there's so many. Oh my God, look at all the BB creams. Well, now I've tried a ton of BB creams and I am lucky and grateful to have been able to play with so many different cool mascaras, eyeliners, eyeshadows, things that I would have never been able to try out. And I have to tell you, the more I try, the more I realize I just want a capsule. We all just kind of want that base foundation capsule just to work from our go-to mascaras. You know, I mean, my goal after trying so many products has shifted and changed in so many ways. And now I'm just currently at a place where it's like less is so much more. You can do so much with a lot less. And I think you can too. That said, I still like having the fun stuff, the color, the this, the that. I see both sides of the coin. That's kind of where I'm at. The last one is don't believe the claims. <laughs> Not like I did in the beginning. I'm pretty tough on stuff like that. And if you're a subscriber, then you've heard me. The skincare side of things. I'm not gonna say that I don't believe in skincare because I do. I will say that after a lot of products that I have tried and have not posted reviews on here, the percentage of skincare, and I'm talking from when I started clean to even before that, so few of them worked. So few of them worked. I know people have under eye creams that are just stellar or they see a huge difference. I have a couple of things that I've tried that I've positively reviewed in the realm of skincare, but I just, I don't buy it. The so. claims just, look at the claims, look at the claims. They're like 97% of users saw a vast improvement in, in anti-aging lines. Who did you interview? It was 32 people. Who were they? How old were they? What type of lifestyle do they have? It's just so much BS. It's like, wild to me. I knew it, but now I'm up close and personal with it. And that is why I am starting a whole new regimen in terms of skincare. And it has to do with what's going on inside, but it also has to do with external and getting back to basics, basics, basics. It's basically this holistic approach to skincare that I am incredibly passionate about and testing out on myself right now. So I will share that, of course. I can't wait to share that with you guys. But yeah, that's the last piece of this and that's kind of like the mic drop moment for me. And I hope that resonates with some of you. And I feel like women are given these claims that are just totally ridiculous and we buy them because we see the positive reviews might be fake or this and this and this, and this has been going on for eons this has been going on since like the beginning of time so this is not news it's just kind of a friendly reminder and um, with that I will stop or else I could just talk about it forever that's all I have for this episode of me talking to you about me <laughs> Oh boy. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up to support the channel. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another video like this one. And I will see you guys all right back here real soon. Okay. Okay. What would you tell yourself if you were just beginning? What's the advice? Give us your sage advice. Keep it going below. Where is this accent coming from? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't even know what it is. Bye.